What's up, Buck? Doug with Dini in the garage. Let's talk transmissions today, transmission swaps, most specifically the 4.5 RFE transmission and the 5.45 RFE transmission that, among other things, came uh, behind the 4.7 liter in the WJ. Now, these transmissions are also found in the WK, the XK Commander, Dodge Trucks. Um, they came behind the 3.7 in the Liberty. They came behind the CRD in some things. Uh, today, we're just talking about the WJ, and the reason is because of the date range the WJ exists in. Now, there's a lot of information that I have to get out about these transmissions, uh, so bear with me, but the gist here is I wanna tell you about each transmission, um, how they're connected, and then how you can take a 4.5 RFE and change it into a 5.45 RFE. Now first, let's explain why you would even wanna do that. The, the, the 4.5 RFE, the four in 4.5 RFE stands for four gears. Uh, the five is a strength designation for how strong of a transmission it is. Um, and then the RFE stands for rear wheel drive, fully electronic, uh, meaning it's fully electronically controlled, um, which is another big key to this transmission that we're gonna get to later. Now they call it a four speed transmission, but they call it a four speed dual speed transmission. And what that means is it's actually got five gears. Um, it's got two second gears, one for upshifting and a different one for downshifting. What this does is it gives you more smooth delivery of power and release of power as you're coming back down. Um, it also has a very tall first gear. That's why the it feels so torquey and that's why the 4.7 feels so torquey. Um, a big part of that is the tall first gear that they put in the 4.5 RFE. Uh, so you've really got a five-speed transmission with a different second gear being used and then when it hits fourth gear the uh, torque converter locks out and you're in overdrive. Now they use that from 99 to 2000. From 2002 to 2004 they use the 545 RFE. Now as the as you might be able to guess the first number being a five it's a five-speed dual speed transmission which actually means it's a six-speed. You got the exact same gears as the 54 uh, excuse me, 4.5 RFE, but it has a second overdrive, <clears throat> a second lockout gear um, with an even higher gearing uh, to, to make it more efficient. So um, this 2001 uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee that I'm driving in right now with the 4.7 has the 5.45 RFE, and when I'm in that second overdrive, I can be doing 70 miles an hour and I'm right at two grand, which makes it much, much better for highway driving. Now, I've never driven a 4.7 with the 4.5 RFE that doesn't have that second lockout gear, but I feel like you'd be kind of screaming on the highway. The nice thing about having that second lockout gear is that you're not trying to, you're in a nice comfortable range, you're not tearing through gas on the highway, you can get some pretty good numbers, uh, but you're also not having to downshift every time you hit a hill. It makes it a real comfortable highway driver. Now, if you noticed, I said they used the 4.5 from 99 to 2000 and the 5.45 from 2002 to 2004. Well, this is a 2001. What about 2001? They technically changed to the 5.45 in 2001. The only issue, and this is an issue that Jeep has or, or Chrysler has across the board, when they make a change in the middle of a vehicle's life, the change is very muddy for at least a year, sometimes two. So you can find 2001s that came from the factory with four fives, even though most of them came with five four fives. They're notorious for this. When they changed the uh, eight and a quarter spline on the Cherokees, the Chrysler eight and a quarter rear differential that the Cherokees had in 97, it's like muddy for the first two years, whether you got a 29 spline or a 27 spline. I guess they just have parts like that they'll find. Like someone's like, oh, hey man, we found some more four or five RFEs. Should we chuck them in even though it's the middle of uh, the 2001? And they're like, oh yeah, man, don't waste them. Just throw them in there, no one will know. Um, so if you're in 2001, I'm gonna tell you an interesting trick to find out exactly which transmission you have. I'm gonna do that at the end though. Let's uh, keep with the flow. So I said there's a way to switch from the 4.5 RFE to the 5.45 RFE. It's not that you have to swap a whole new transmission in. It's so insanely simple. Literally, all you have to do is swap the 
uh, TCM, the transmission control module, under the hood. You find the transmission control module from a 545 RFE, you remove it, you take it to your uh, Jeep that has a 45 RFE, and you swap it in. Let me explain why. The key to this is the construction of, uh, from here on out, unless I'm referring to both of them in the same sentence, I'm just gonna call it the 545. It's easier than saying both names, my tongue's gonna freaking cramp up. <clears throat> the reason this is possible is because of the construction of the 545. It does not have bands. It has a three planetary gear set electronically controlled by solenoids with clutch packs. All right. Now, I am not a transmission guy, so I can't explain it much more than that. But what I can tell you is the way that it changes the gears is by uh, solenoids controlling clutch packs gripping on different parts of the three planetary gear set. Little side note, the three planetary gear set is why this transmission is so friggin' strong. They really are incredibly strong. You have to keep them cool, you have to keep them properly lubricated, but they are incredibly strong. Now, there are no bands inside of this transmission. Because it's just clutch packs gripping on different pieces of the uh, three planetary gear set, and if you're a transmission guy, I apologize if I'm slaughtering that explanation. I'm oversimplifying it grossly. Uh, but what that means is that it doesn't have set gears. It's not like a manual transmission. One, two, three, four. The, the whole gearing is, is more fluid like that. Uh, so the second lockout gear that you get with the 545 is just a software thing. It's it's literally just a code written to the TCM telling the solenoids to control the clutch packs differently to allow for a different uh, uh, gear ratio in that fifth gear. In fact, I was talking to somebody on the forum because I didn't understand this. I was like, man, how do you just magically get another gear? Everybody's talking, I've heard about this swap for as long as I've been into Jeeps. But I was always, I was like, that's dumb. There's no way, like somebody's fooling themselves uh, or something. I didn't understand how you could possibly just magically get another gear. That doesn't make sense logically. So I was talking to some guy on a Dodge forum actually. I couldn't even get an answer on Jeep forum. I had to go to a Dodge forum, Dodge Hemi forum. And there was this friggin' transmission guru genius. I only stirred, understood every fourth word he even said uh, because he was so far above me, but uh, I was able to grasp that it's all just code. In fact, he did the math on the 545. If you wanted to, you could write a code and the 545 could actually have eight forward gears and three reverse gears. Now, the, the changes would be so minuscule, you would barely even know them. It'd be like driving a, um, a CVT at that point. But if somebody wanted to write a code for a TCM, you could get a 545 uh, to have eight forward gears and three reverse gears, which I think is pretty darn interesting. So I told you the differences between the two, I told you the similarities between the two, uh, most notably the similarity is that um, they're the exact same transmission, literally. There's nothing different. I searched and crawled every forum you could imagine trying to find some thing that was different. Like, no man, they have, there has to be something, right? A case, a valve, a hose, you know? Um, but nope, there's nothing. To the point that when they first made the swap, in 2001, if you had a vehicle with a 4.5 RFE and you took it to a Dodge dealership, they would uh, reflash your TCM for you and just give you that fifth gear. Now, they don't do that anymore. Um, they figure if you've got a 20-year-old uh, 4.7 uh, with a 5 with a 4.5, they don't really owe you anything at this point. Um, but uh, so we explained the similarities and we explained why you would want to do this swap. Let me tell you how you can figure out which transmission you have without getting under your Jeep, without opening the hood, without anything. Now, if you have a 2002 or later, you have the 545. Unless somebody swapped in a 45 at some point, um, you came from the factory with a 545. If you have a 2000 or before, you came from the factory with a 45. Unless somebody swapped in the 545 or already did the TCM flash, you have the 45. Now, if you have a 2001 though, it's a gray area. You probably have a 545, you might not. The easy way obviously would be to get in your vehicle and drive it. Do you have five gears? If yes, then yes. Um, 
but and I, even me myself, I wasn't sure if I had it or not. So I was like tricking myself into thinking that I didn't actually feel it go into that fifth gear when I was like testing it one, two, three, you know, driving down the road. Um, there's a much easier way. Chrysler has a website where you can put in your VIN number and it will give you your factory build sheet. All the options that came standard on your vehicle, all the optional options, and a bunch of other cool information. It also gives you a bunch of useless information, like it tells you that it came with four springs, you know, as far as like uh, suspension springs and it had seats, you know. Um, but it also gives you some optional information. An example that I will give you of why this is so useful is when I bought this Jeep, Eric actually sent me this. He's like, hey man, I know it's far away. It's like an hour from you, but I think this might be perfect. I got the VIN number from the guy. I put it into this website and I was, I was able to tell everything about this Jeep before I ever showed up. I could see it had Quadra Drive. I could see it had um, 373 gearing with Verilock. Uh, I was able to see that it unfortunately had 17 inch rims, which I think looked terrible on a WJ and I can't wait to get rid of them. And when I went back and looked at it, I was able to tell that it came from the factory with the 545 RFE transmission. All right, so I will leave a link to that website down below. Crazy useful. Eric and I use it in the junkyard too. If we roll up on a Jeep and we want to figure something out about it, but we're not certain, we do this a lot with like gearing and stuff. Sometimes the tag is missing uh, or, or anything, you know, let's just figure out about this Jeep. It'll tell you where it was made. You can confirm the year, um, where it was sold. So you just throw the VIN number in. Now it only is guaranteed to work from 1998 and before. We have had success with some VIN numbers before 98, but not all of them. So if you have a vehicle before 98, but this works for your Jeep, your Dodge, your Ram, your Chrysler, uh, anything under that Chrysler umbrella. I don't know about Fiat, honestly, but I assume maybe, I don't know, who cares who drives a Fiat anyway. Um, I can't imagine we have a single viewer that drives a Fiat. If you are a subscriber of D&E and you drive a Fiat, let me know, man. I got some questions for you. Um, so uh, yeah, use that website. The thing about that website is it breaks all the time. So if you go there and it doesn't work, try back in two days. I don't know why it doesn't work. Anyway, I won't make this video any longer with mindless rambling and babble. Uh, I will include a clip at the end of where to find the um, TCM inside your engine bay. If you are looking at your engine bay, this is gonna be the same for all year four sevens, including the HO. Looking at it right here, this right here, that's your TCM. It's got a couple little bolts I think they're uh, little allen keys on either side and then this is the main harness you pull that off you put the new one in that's all there is to it this guy right here uh, for the record this is an independent TCM you're not changing your ECU at the same time some vehicles like the 4 liter have um, a transmission that's controlled with the ECU is one unit in the same this is just your transmission control unit that's it right here now you got everything. If you have any questions, by all means, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. I was kind of hoping that I had the five four, or the four five in this so that I could do the TCM swap because uh, I wanted to see it work, but I talked to no less than 20 people who have done it and they said it's a direct bolt-in. You don't have to change wiring harnesses. You don't have to change anything. Just pull it out. Just just do it, man. It just you, you plug the new TCM in. It doesn't have to learn anything. You just get in and drive it, and now you have fifth gear. It's pretty wild, honestly. Um, and hard to get your head around if you're thinking about a manual transmission, just all of a sudden finding another gear. But I don't know, man. Uh, that's about it. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.